At the end of this video, you will be able to use your JavaScript code inside your Flutter project. So let's get started. You might have a JavaScript application that you have built. So this Tesla app is speculated to be built in React Native. However, there are some bottlenecks and unpleasant features that you can't deal with it anymore. And this is costing you churn for your app downloads, bad customers review, and your business. And you found Flutter as a solution to these problems. However, it will take a long time for you to convert your big code base into the Dart and Flutter ecosystem. So is there an easier way to migrate your JavaScript application with Flutter? Yes, there is. Kinda. Introducing Flutter JS package. So this package can save time for you to convert your JavaScript application to Flutter. How so? Well, typically in an app, it is built with three parts. The front end, the logic, which can be found in the offline and online. So typically for the front end, this is specific to what framework you are using. Therefore, if you were from a JS application, you definitely need to learn Flutter and Dart in order for you to use the Flutter framework. Other than the front end, you have your logic, which is offline and online. So let's focus on the online logic. So the online logic consists of your API calls and your cloud functions. These are language agnostic, which means that it is communicated through API calls, whether the API is built in JavaScript or Node.js or Golang or even in Python, but it still can be communicated through the API calls in any kind of framework. Then let's move on to the offline logic, which is a gray area because there might be a way for you to talk your JavaScript offline logic, or we normally call it business logic, to your front end, whether it is Flutter, React Native, Ionic and whatnot. So other than the mobile side of things, there might be a time where you also need to talk to your desktop and web application side of things. So that means the platform that you need to support is Android, iOS, macOS, Windows, and the web. And to support all of these platforms, you probably want to use the Flutter framework. So is there a way for us to have our JavaScript business logic talking to our Flutter front end? Yes, there is. And obviously at the start of this video, the answer is that we are able to use the Flutter JS package. So therefore in this video, I'm going to share with you on how to use the Flutter JS package, how it works and its performance. So let's get started on how to use it. So first of all, make sure that your Flutter channel is in the latest stable version. At the same time, add your assets or your JS file inside a assets folder and add it inside your pubspec.yaml file. So as you can see over here under my assets, there is the blog.js file. So once you have everything, then let's get started on how to use our Flutter JS package. And also make sure that you have your Flutter underscore JS package inside your pubspec YAML file. All right, so first thing first is we need to get the JavaScript runtime inside your app. So this allows you to get the JavaScript engine running or initializing it. So just create a simple variable. You can call it JS runtime and use the method get JavaScript runtime. Then the second thing is that with this JavaScript runtime object, you're able to evaluate the JavaScript code, but it will be inside a string form. So what you need to do is you can create a function. So let's call it add from JS. And then obviously we need the JavaScript runtime. And for this simple function, it requires two arguments, which is the first number and second number. So we can copy this and paste it inside our main.dart. At the same time, we can just add in the data types. And now for this function, we're going to get our JavaScript into Flutter in a string form. In order for us to do that, we need to use this thing called the root bundle. So what the root bundle does is that it contains the resource that was packaged inside the application. So if you remember correctly, inside our pubspec.yaml file, we actually imported our assets under our assets section. So this means that we are able to get the block.js file inside our assets folder in this function over here. And what this load string does is that 
it converts this block.js file into a string. But if you were to look closely inside our load string, it is actually a future function. Therefore, we need to use the await keyword and that means we need to use the async Kernel's keyword as well. So once we are able to get the block.js file into a string, then we are going to make use of the JS runtime object to evaluate our string from our block.js and use our add function with the first number and second number. So what this looks like is basically saying that let's add our first number, for example, one and our second number, which is also one. So that is exactly what we are doing right here with the block.js plus our string over here. So if you don't know this three double apostrophe, this is just a string that has multi line. So this is just a way for you to be reminded that you are able to have multiple lines of JavaScript code. So once this is done, the next thing is this JS result over here is actually a JS evaluation result object. So we want to make it into a data that we can use later on. So we're going to make use of this string result field. So it returns the string version of the JavaScript result that we have. Now the thing is for this add from JS, we are returning an integer. And since we have the asynchronous syntax in it, we need to make use of the future method. So that means we will have to return an integer, but for this JS string result, what we are expecting is also an integer. So what we can do is we can make use of this dot parse method from the integer data type. And this will just parse our result into an integer and then we can return it as such. Now we're going to add it inside our floating action button. So since this is a future function, I will highly recommend you to use the try catch block. So inside our try block, we are going to create a variable that is called result. So this result is from the add from JS function. And then we need to pass in the different arguments. So our JS runtime, our initial value from the value notifier, which is zero and the number that we want to increment. And since add from JS is a future function or an asynchronous function, we will have to use the await. And at the same time, we need to add in the async keyword. Then once we are successful under the try block, we will then update the value notifier with our result. Lastly, if it has an error, what we can do is we can make it a little bit more specific rather than catching any errors. We want to catch a platform exception error. So this exception indicates that we have a failure in a specific platform, which is JavaScript. And then we can just print out as such. And since this is a platform exception, we have the details field. So we are able to know what exactly the error is. And now let's save this and see if it works. So inside our app over here, it starts with zero. And then if we were to click on this plus button, we will expect this zero to be one. So let's click on this and there you go it becomes one and then it should become two, three, four, and so on. All right, that's great. All right, so now once you know how it's done, let's see how it works. So I'm not going to give you like a visual representation because I really don't know better, but I'm just going to go through on the documentation of the Flutter.js package. So how this author have managed to use JavaScript in the other platforms is that, so it uses the quick JS, which is a JavaScript engine, and we use the Dart FFI that allows us to talk in Android and iOS. And this can be opened up to our Windows, Linux, and even Mac OS as well. So for the different native mobile platforms, for iOS, it actually uses the native JavaScript core library, which is actually provided by the iOS SDK. And then for the Android, it uses this JavaScript engine that is called Quick JS. Then for Mac OS, the JavaScript core is also provided by the OS X. And for Windows and Linux, it uses the Quick JS. So all of these packages are actually good enough for you to run JavaScript code. So not only Flutter.js allows you to run JavaScript, it can also execute validation, rule engines, and also Redux logic shared from your JavaScript applications. So the opportunities are huge.
So with that said, let's see the performance. So for the quick JS for the non iOS platform, there is a page for its benchmark. So quick JS, its size is 620 kilobytes, which is pretty okay. And you can see the rest of the JavaScript engine is smaller or even bigger. In terms of performance versus the executable size, you could see the total score for each of these different benchmarks is pretty high compared to the other small little libraries that you have over here. So QuickJS can really run pretty fast for its size. You can't really compare to V8 because 28 megabytes and obviously it definitely can run a lot faster than just a small library. I'm going to share another benchmark that actually uses a huge JS library that is called AJV. For those who don't know, AJV is just a JS library that uses JSON in order for you to validate your forms through a schema concept. So this AJV example is actually found in the Flutter JS package. And they actually imported the whole AJV JS file and it consists of 7,000 lines of code. So under this AJV example, they are going to use the JS to Flutter package and load the whole AJV.js file in order for it to validate the different fields in this example. So to calculate on how much time a function is used to execute, we are going to use this thing called the timeline dot time sync. So this timeline dot time sync is used inside your Dart dev tools. You'll probably create a name for this function that you want to run and then you just put in the function that you want to run in the next parameter. So I'm going to calculate on how much time this init.js engine is used to run the whole AJV file. So you need to initialize the AJV file and then a couple of schemas that you need to add in inside your AJV. Also another thing is I'm going to calculate on how much time it is to validate the different fields inside this app over here. So this will use the JS runtime to evaluate the current expression and see whether it is valid or not. So there are two things you want to calculate, the timing for the AJV to validate and the timing for the AJV to initialize. Moreover, I'm using the Android emulator to test out how fast it will run. So I will highly not recommend you to use an emulator or simulator. I would recommend you to use an actual physical device because that is how you actually test for your speed or performance in an app. At the same time, you need to run in profile mode. This will let you know how fast your Flutter app will run. So this will give a more accurate picture on how fast your Flutter app will run. So if you were to go to the Dart Dev Tools, you can see that the init.js engine over here takes about 0.6 milliseconds, which is pretty fast for a function. Then at the same time, this validate function for the AJV file takes about 0.2 milliseconds. So that is also very, very fast. So therefore, the Flutter JS package actually is a very good library for you to run on an Android. So I haven't run it on an iOS or Mac OS or Windows. But overall, I think this is a good package for you to use Flutter inside your Flutter applications. So in summary, we learned on how to use the Flutter JS package and how it works and also the performance on an Android device. But you can check it out in iOS or macOS or even in your Windows version of your Flutter app. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of these kind of videos, subscribe down below and comment down whether you want to migrate your current React Native or even Ionic or whatever JS application into Flutter. If you need any help with migrating your applications into Flutter, you can also comment down below. So that's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye.